What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the EAFC 24 career mode. It's episode number 11 and it's a brand new season beginning today with our second year at Kenilworth Road with Premier League football remaining starting today and of course as it's a Saturday morning guys you know the drill 1000 likes and we'll upload the next episode. So yeah 1000 likes I'll get the next episode uploaded. So you know Luton Town are due to move into a new stadium very soon but I don't, I don't think just yet. I don't think just yet. For some bizarre reason, by the way, last year we had green seats. <laughs> I don't know if anyone noticed this, but last year we had green seats. I don't know why. A bit of a weird bug, but of course, we're going to repaint them for the new season, Orange. Ain't got much money, but I think we can employ a painter. So, yeah, season two beginning today. Again, 1,000 likes, and I will upload the next episode. So, for season two, our budget with Luton Town is going to be... It's like, I, I'm not disappointed, but it could have been more. It could have been better. Oh, man, 32 mil is not a lot in modern football, is it? Let's be honest here. That's like two quality players at best nowadays. We've got a small squad. we got a poor team. It's not... It's not great, is it? It's not great. Obviously, and don't forget, we lost Kabore and uh, Samuel Lekong, who both gone. Alfie is going to leave, as is Clark as well, uh, when we advance one day in the calendar, because for some reason on the first day, they're always here. That, that's not... <sighs> Look, we knew this was going to be a challenge. We didn't just mean season one. It's going to be a challenge for a while. Still, first order of business is to send our youth scouts out. Yes, a couple of days ago, I asked you guys, where should we send our scouts for the new year? And I want to say thank you for all the comments and the great suggestions. You guys are like my chief scouts, man. I love it. And we're going to send them out today. Of course, we're keeping one in England as per usual. But you know what? This is my choice. I'm not going to use the best scout. This is my one. I'm going to let you guys have the best two scouts. So the, the, the worst scout, Dylan Savage, will keep in England. That's my choice. We're sending him to England for another nine months, looking for those homegrown talents and... Should I specify a position this time? Like, we are kind of lacking, like, a real class centre-half. Um, no, anyone. Anyone you can find, mate. And uh, no type. I prefer to keep it any, to be honest, and just, just cast the biggest net possible, you know? So, yes, thank you for all the suggestions, guys. The comments were sublime. You didn't just give me recommendations, but also reasons why we should scout those countries. And I can only pick two, but the first one... It's from Andy G806, and he said, Luton has a rich history of African, Jamaican, and Polish communities. They would be my free shouts for you, Scouts. That is a great shout right there, because Luton is so diverse, so multicultural. I absolutely love it. And it's a brilliant comment and a great suggestion. So Jamaica, sadly, not scoutable in the game. Africa, lots of countries to choose, but I am going to choose Poland. I rarely ever scout. That's, that's Austria, Doxy Boy. Did you fail geography? Uh, <laughs> I very rarely choose Poland. <laughs> And one of the reasons is because I can't find them on the map. I got an E in GCSE Geography for those curious. That won't surprise anyone. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll send them to Poland. So great suggestion there as we look to diversify our academy. And, you know, I had so many shouts for all of the different regions. We're talking North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Oceania as well. But I also did see a lot of recommendations for Scandinavia. Denmark, Norway, Sweden, the top three that I saw popping up in the comments in that episode. Oh man, I wish, I wish you could randomize it, man. I wish you could randomize it, but I think I'm gonna go with Norway because I rarely ever scout Norway. Out of the Scandinavian nations, I normally go Denmark, Sweden, but barely ever Norway. So yeah, our five star, five star, David Evans off to Norway. Guys, thank you so much for the comments. Absolutely brilliant suggestions. I love the reasons you gave as well, but these are my three scouts and where they're going out for the next nine months. England, Poland, and Norway. Let's find some gems. Righty-ho, uh, let's advance one day in the calendar because that means that we're gonna see our three players leave. So we'll now know what we're working with for the new season. There we go in the top right. Anderson's gone to Brentford, as we remember. Alfie's off to Porto. And Clark has, of course, gone to... Ah! Oh, Leeds! Sorry, I just remembered. Who got promoted then in the end? Who got promoted? Because you can't get the playoffs, can you? So we knew that Leicester broke the record. Norwich went up as well. Oh, it was the Borough! Michael Carrick pulled it round. Tough start for the Borough in real life this season, we know. But Middlesbrough, Michael Carrick has got them up. So it's the Borough and Norwich and also Leicester in the playoffs. So Leeds stay in the championship, as do Southampton. Very interesting indeed. So now those three sales have gone through. We see our budget has risen to £38 million. <laughs> 
fairly worth it, guys. But uh, do you know what? We're looting town, mate. We'll take what we can get. So £38 million now for the new season after those three sales go through. Uh, as you can see, for the new season, our squad... Now it is a bit thicker due to those lone players returning, but still really the problem is a lack of first team quality. Yes, there's more depth for this year, but last season, league's lowest scorers, one of the worst defensive records, 16th place. I mean, really, we've got problems all over the pitch. So one quick run through the squad as well. Uh, you'll see the players that we're going to try. And hang on a minute, it's Wood. Oh, no, he's had a potential decrease. And we definitely need to loan him out. But uh, we, we definitely do need to sell on a few players with their contract coming at the end of the year. I don't know about the captain. I'll think about it. But I think Krull's going to go. Amari Bell probably as well. Um, yeah, it's... It's still got a lot of problems, this squad. It's still got a lot of problems. Barkley, I think, definitely give him a new extension after the one he got in January. Oh, wow! Uh, what? Uh, how is that even possible? Did you not see what this guy did at the Etihad last year, EA? How? Well, that's put me in a bad mood. How are you going to downgrade the kid? How are you going to downgrade my short king? That's absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, we do have a few players that deals that come at the end of the year, as you can see. Uh, Misquay, the captain, John McAtee, Dion Pereira, Watson, a few players coming back from loan here, as you can see. And of course, the boss, Cruel and Bell, I think, are definitely going on the transfer list. And Fred Onyedim was back from Rotherham as well. So, yeah, we, we're definitely going to look to try and sell a few of these players. I know we don't have the thickest of squads, but... There's a lot of players who, with, with no disrespect, they're, they're just not Premier League quality. They, they might still be reasonably young, but there's a few players here that they're just not going to make it in the top tier. So for new signings, as we begin our rebuild, obviously in the last episode, you guys gave me some fantastic suggestions. Appreciate that very much. But to begin with, we're going to check the free agents pool. Uh, Lewis Baker wouldn't be a bad little pick up on our freebie, to be fair. He, um, he was born in Luton, Lewis Baker, before coming through the Chelsea Academy. Is that our level? Is that really our level? I mean, seriously. Like, with no disrespect, is that our level? <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking that question when the answer is obviously yes. We're still a little Luton Town. Uh, I mean, <laughs> is this what we're doing to start of season two? Looking at players like Mark Gillespie. I mean, really? I mean, Joe Hart now 37. I wouldn't, I'm not going to say no, but it's not quite what we were dreaming of, is it? Yeah, I've got to say, no one in the free agents pool this year really excites me. Joe Warren wouldn't be a bad shout, to be fair. Though, relegated with Forrest, could uh, could still do a job in the top tier. That's probably the best pick of the bunch there from England. So, yeah, you know, free agents, normally you can find like a really good player available every single year. But I've got to say, this time around, looks a, looks a little bit more slim pickings, if you will. Not really, or Francois Coquelin could, could still possibly do a job. T tough start list, not many freebies available, and that's, that's not good news for Little Luton Town with their small budget. Oh, there's a decent little pickup. Pero Riedervald from Crystal Palace, obviously came in as a youngster uh, with, with uh, De Boer, if you remember, during that very brief stint when Frank De Boer was, uh, was manager of, uh, of Palace. I think he would probably be a really good fit for us, to be fair. Okay, uh, plan B. How about players that are transfer listed in the Premier League? Look at those sort of budget pickups we can find. Um, Jason Steele, Marcus Bettinelli, possibly as our new number ones. But, I mean, how much better are they going to be than Kaminsky? Jamal Lowe from Bournemouth coming back from loan. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. Um, loan deals. Oh, I'll tell you what. Chapman Maker from, uh, from Villa. Uh, sorry, uh, from Chelsea now. From Villa to Chelsea. That's, that's not a bad shout on a loan deal. Wouldn't be against that at all. Now, normally we look for players that were relegated with their teams last season. And, you know, I must say, Burnley have got some good young players, including in the goalkeeper position, Murich and also Trafford as well. Like, Murich is a few years older, but only one of them can, can really start regularly. So I wouldn't mind getting either of those players there. Murich is now 25, but in the prime. Traff will be a good shout as well. I actually think Murich played more than Trafford last season for Burnley in the game. So, I mean, e either would do quite well to me. The other two that went down were Forrest and... Oh, it was, oh, it was Wolves, wasn't it? Wolves went down too. So, uh, I wonder... Jose Sarr coming in a bit... Well, getting on a bit now at 31. Says the soon-to-be 31-year-old. Um, we did look at Totti Gomez last season, to be fair, didn't we? So, I put him back on the shortlist... Um, Kilman's not a bad shout as well. He's more than good enough to stay in the Premier League too. 
Wolves, Forest, and Burnley. They've, they've all got players that could still do a job in the top tier. Oh, Nico Williams would be a good player to fill in for Gaborro as well, wouldn't he? Um, Gibbs, Gibbs White is still there. Would he stay in the championship? Not too sure. Uh, oh, they've got Sangare as well. Probably a bit out of our price range, unfortunately, but it'd be brilliant. He should be snapped up by a better team, surely. Awanee, uh, Taiwo as well could do the job. Elanga too. Okay, let's advance a few days in the calendar. And, well, that's not a player I was planning to sell. Marlis Nakamba, 4 mil to Fulham. They only just finished above us last season, so no, I'm going to keep Nakamba. I quite like him, to be fair, as a, uh, a good senior in this team. Um, and we've got a bid here for Pereira from... Oh, man, this is tough, man. Like, this, this isn't going to raise as much money, though. It's barely worth even doing. Right, I'm going to reject that loan offer there because I want to keep this guy in the Football League. Pereira, though, does have Portugal as a dual nationality, so I kind of like that move, to be fair. But it's not going to raise as much money. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a good loan deal, though. I, I, I like that a lot. Ethan Wood, we're still going to loan him out this year because he's just not Premier League level yet. But West Brom in the Championship, that would be a great couple of years for him there at the Hawthorns. I'll have that. And this is quite nice to see as well. Uh, two decent bids here that are quite realistic, I'd say. Uh, Tim Krull spending his last year in pro football in Edinburgh. Not, not a bad place to do it with uh, Hearts at Tyne Castle. And uh, Lee Evans, Welsh national, wanted by Cardiff. I like that a lot. A lot more realistic, I feel. Yeah, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it does seem as though EA have done a little bit more work on the realism in the transfer market because... You know, this is this is a bit more realistic here. Leighton Orient, the O's, one in uh, one of one of our young players. It, it does feel, yeah, it, it does feel a lot more realistic. I, I much prefer this. Uh, Brown wanted by Red Bull Salzburg. Oh, you know, I could see, I could see that. To be fair, going to Austria, I reckon I can get two mil for him though. Yeah, we do want more goal scorers this year, but Jacob Brown last season really struggled for me. So yeah, I quite like that. To be fair, going to RB Salzburg. I know they like their young players, but 26 is still quite young. And uh, Ethan Wood is ready to go to the Hawthorns as well. So, yeah, you know, I mentioned before, but guys as well, like I know I do try and focus on realism. I can't always get it right. Sometimes I will make a mistake. Sometimes I will make a sale or signing. You'll be like, oh, not too sure about that one, Doxy boy. But I do try my best. And, uh, and so far, so good, I think. Ah, but uh, Pereira's transfer talks have broken down, which is annoying. I've got a feeling, you know, that quite a lot of our players that have come back from loan aren't going to go. Because what you do notice is that... Clubs clubs often can't afford the salaries of those lower rated players if they're at clubs in a top tier of their division. So for example, Tim Krull is 68 rated, but he's on, where's the finance? He's on 14 and a half grand a week. That's a lot of money for a 68 rated player with no upside now at 36. There you go, wrong Q. Transfer talks broke down. So that is going to be one of the frustrating things to look out for here. Like, we, we've got a lot of players on the transfer list. We'll do our best to sell them. But the clubs that want to bring those players in might not be able to afford those wages. And so if the player doesn't want to cut their wages, which, let's be honest here, they don't need to, then they won't be able to get, get sold. This is just another challenge to add to an already difficult season. Well, there is one sale. I don't mind that, to be fair. RB Salzburg have got a lot of different nationalities at their club. And 26 isn't old, believe me. Jacob Brown gone for 2 mil. Budget up now to around 40 million. And ready want to take Dion Pereira, which I would accept. When am I going to get the scout reports back on the free agents I'm scouting right now? Because I want to... I want to make a signing. It's all well and good trying to set our players, but I want to sign someone as well. So that's that's also Wood going out on loan then to West Brom for a couple of years too. That's, that's a really good fit for him there. And that's another lone player going out. And that's Evans to Cardiff. So, yeah. So far, we've sold a striker. And we've loaned out two young players. And we're, what are we now? Nearly three weeks into the transfer window. And we haven't signed anyone yet. It's it's not been a great start, man. It's, it's not been a great start. The freebies are still available. The one I really want is Hero Riedervald. And also Joe Warren as well, to be fair. But again, e even though there's some great suggestions from you guys, and again, I, I know Dewsbury Hall is someone you guys really want me to bring back. With just 40 mil in the budget, that's 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 going to be, again, around a third of our budget gone on one player. Possibly even more than that. Ah, that loan deal broke down there. Um, so, Admiral, we're going to sell him to that Turkish club. Uh, Rodri approached on loan from oh, Serie B side this time. First, it was the Dutch side. 
Going to wait for a football league sign. So, not, not to be fair, not against loaning one of my young players out to a um, to a uh, to a European side, but I'd prefer to keep them in the football league so I can at least track their cup stats if nothing else. Now we are starting to get the scout reports on the uh, on the free agents though. Hero Riedewald is seventy five rated. I think I'm going to bring him in. You know. I have seen a shout for Hero in the comments. I think it'd be a good little pickup for us. Yep, there we go. 30 grand a week, four year deal, and Hero Reedvald is in. I really like that too. You know, 27 years old in the prime of his career, but very versatile. And obviously, you know, London to Luton, not too far. So I quite like that for the guy not needing to relocate very far. So yeah, Reedvald in, we'll have him. And I've got to say, for me, as a DM in this team, with Laconga now gone. I, I think he fits this team really well. You know, technical, versatile as well. I want to get the weak foot up and that defensive work rate too. I'll work on the latter first. But yeah, very happy with that sign in there. You know, I have seen a lot of you guys saying as well, Doxy boy, change the tactics. You know, the fire with the back system does not suit you. And you're right, it doesn't. You know, Rob Edwards is gone now. This is my team. I want to play my way, which is 4 2 3 1. That's, that's normally my system. So that'll mean the Camber and Reed Val sit deep as DMs, but I I prefer that, personally. We can drop cash into the bench. We, we're going to need a right back. You know, and Panzu can do a job at right back if required, but it should help us score a few more goals now. I mean, a front four as opposed to just one man up on his own. So, another bid for our Zimbabwean striker, back from his loan spell. Uh, Louis Watson, wanted by the Canadian team, Montreal. Not against that at all. So, still waiting for a few more scout reports to come in on our free agent players as that transfer breaks down. Man, this is going to be the problem we've got. You know, teams just can't really afford the salaries of these sort of players. So, I mean, yeah, it's their level, but if the player's under contract, I mean, it's their right. Like, they, 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 they have a right to that money. So, yeah, this is just another part of the challenge for us this year. Problems continue to start the season off that we have sold our Zimbabwean striker. So, I mean, we're, we're slowly but surely getting these players' salaries off the books, but it's not raising our budget by much. Right, so here we go. Scout reports on the players that were relegated last season from Forest and Wolves and Burnley as well. I, I, I think... Oh, not again. I... Oh, this is one of the most challenging starts to a CM save I've ever had. I, I think what we need to do is find out how much company wants for either Trafford or Murich. Eva would do me fine. Eva would do me fine. It just depends on who company wants to keep. So for Murich, he's just stalled on a bid of £8 million plus McAtee. And as for Trafford, if I'm being honest, I would prefer Murich. A few years older, yes, but... He wants a bit more for Trafford, I must say. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I think I would prefer Murich, personally. Because he was their starting goalkeeper last year. He does not want to let go of Trafford at all. I think, like with Southampton and Bazunu, he'd rather keep hold of the young goalkeeper and beef him up in the championship. So, I'm, I'm going to wait for him to come back on Murich. I'm going to make him my number one target. What's he said? Uh, no, he wants 11.1 .1 mil. Come on, Vinny, you can't use both of them. Can't use both of them. I still think I can get him down to around 9 mil, though. You know, he was their starting goalkeeper last year in the Premier League. And again, I like the idea of him keeping older Trafford for letting go of the more senior at 26. And to be fair, 9.5 mil. Look at the tension in the top right as well. He's more than happy to negotiate. So I want to try and offload one of the players that have come back. Do you fancy Dion Pereira? Plus 9 million. It's not a bad, not a bad offer. Not a bad offer, Vinny. And nope, he just says he just wants the 9.5 mil. I still think I can get him down. I still think I can get him down. And for 9.1 mil, I, I will take that. For Murich, that's a good deal. Yeah, there we go. Murich in five-year deal. Is it 24 grand a week as well? Even so, reasonably low salary for a Premier League side. Exactly what we want. Don't put players on high contracts we can't afford. So the Kosovo International is in. I don't think I've ever signed a player from Kosovo before. But anyway, the thing that I was really attracted to was the 87 kicking. And, you know, if us passing out from the back, that is that is really handy to have on a goalkeeper when you want to build from the back. So, yeah, really pleased with that. Got to get the positioning up as well. I might just keep him on balance, to be fair. But, yeah, new starting goalkeeper and, and should really be a step up on Kaminsky and Krull. Right, a couple more bids. Uh, Lekonga wanted by Stuttgart. 
might just let him go there and have a one and done year with Sambi. But uh, for McAtee, Swansea want him. And for Pereira, he's wanted by this Turkish side. So our budget now is down to what, about 30 mil, I'd say, something like that? Yeah, around 30 million pounds. So basically where we started from. Obviously, I mentioned with Cunha last season, I mean, him being in the top five for goals of Wolves last year, I did say I'd love to bring him to Luton, but to be fair, I don't think we can afford him because they'd ask for more than 30 mil, I'd say, or probably about that, which would be our entire budget. And I think that... With a few comments as well saying he should be looking at a move to a bigger club than Luton. I think that's probably right as well. So I don't want to blow my entire budget on one player when I think other bigger clubs would probably be a realistic move for him as well. So I think we'll leave Matthias where he is for now and hopefully a big club will pick him up. Tywo wouldn't be a bad shout though with relegated Forest, Really physical striker as well. That's about half our budget though as well. This is so tough. We do need a new right back though. We've not got a single right back now that Cabore is gone. So... I've got three good names on the shortlist here. Uh, Connor Roberts from Burnley. That would be a super cheap option. Maybe Kabore coming back, but I think Man City will probably want to keep hold. Oh, 70 grand a week. Absolutely no chance, mate. That's more than double our highest earner. But also Nico Williams at Forest as well. Forest going down to Connor Roberts would be a great cheap option. And you remember I said I wanted to play with a long throw. He's got one. 87 stamina as well in the final year of his contract. I'm... Um, I'm going to bring in Connor Roberts. I need two, so I might get Williams as well. Yeah, Burnley obviously relegated last season. Connor Roberts out of contract coming at the end of the year. I did say I wanted a player that can launch that ball in Rory Delap style. And we was dealing coming at the end of the year. I mean, Burnley, you can't hold me to ransom, lads. The dude's about to walk on a free. So, yeah, hopefully can get him for... Yeah, there we go. 3.75 mil. The game's glitching out, but we will take it. 29 grand a week, four-year deal, buzzing with that for just 3.75 mil. Connor Roberts in to join Murich as ex-Burnley players here now at Kenilworth Road. So, yeah, really like that. You know, really, really high stamina. You know it's important to me. And that long throw in trade we were looking for as well. He's the perfect fit. And first team quality means he'll go right into the first 11 as well. So, yeah, really happy with that sign in there. Right, so the squad now is looking better. Not by much, but looking better. Three new defensive players coming in in Reed Vald and the two relegated lads from Burnley. Again, we still need to figure out the firepower and what we're going to do up top, but we still got a lot of money to work with as well due to the signings being quite cheap so far. Um, yeah, for, you know, for the moment, I'm, I'm quite pleased with how we're doing this. You know, we're not just signing a bunch of wonder kids. We're not signing players that are like 80 rated plus. We're bringing players in that realistically will be a good fit. And as we take a look here, now we've got the scouting updates, the first ones of the new mission. Let's find out what we've got here. That's not a great start. Oh, God. To be fair, he is the lowest rated scout of them all. Uh, as from Poland, though, uh, do you know, I think Polish is the third most spoken language in Luton. I was looking at the demographics earlier before I started recording. I think that's right. Lezek could be a uh, pretty decent player, I think, there. 54, 72 rated. And the other scout, of course, we sent to Norway. Looking for the next Erling Haaland here. I don't think he's going to make the cut. Absolutely not. Sander Ali, however, certainly could. And I tell you what, good start here from Norway. Very good start. Don't think he's going to make the cut, though. So there's another sale as McAtee is off. And guys, right now, if I can ask you to leave a like, I'd really appreciate it. The first episode of a new season is always a long one, and it does take a while to make. So if you could leave a like, I really would appreciate it. But at the moment, I've got to say, with our budget now rising to, what's that, £25 million I don't really know what to do with it, you know, we'll get like maybe a million for the season to get sales as well in a couple of weeks time. I don't know what to do with the money, man. So still, any more transfer suggestions? Leave them in the comments, man. We're not done yet. And so I think as we look slightly further forward, I'm going to make one final signing or wrap up today's episode with this. Calamo O'Hare still at the Rico, but out of contract coming the end of the season. Coventry still in the championship, and he'll be available on a budget deal. Great technical stats, 90 stamina, which you know I love, and the high, high work rates as well. For under 4 mil, that's a steal. Please take one of my players, Coventry, honestly. Like, I can't sell them, so I want to swap them out instead. 3.7 mil, oh, problem. <laughs> Look, I'm happy to give you someone, but not him. Look at the tension in the top right, though. We've got tons of time to try and negotiate a deal there. How about 3.5 mil plus Louis Watson? 
Yep, we'll have that. Nicely done. I'll take that every day. Let's have to steal that. Yep, there we go. Callum O'Hare is in. Fourth signing of the window thus far. And I've got to say, very happy that budget buy there for such a class player, technically, with great stamina as well. So, yeah, really pleased with that. 26 years old, 30 grand a week. And to me, excellent, excellent, excellent player either to have in our first 11 or off the bench. Let's get out weak for that if we can. That'll be really handy indeed. So... Uh, I think we should leave it there, guys. So, big thank you for watching the first episode of Season 2. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And, guys, keep the comments coming in for more transfer suggestions because there's still a month to go before the window slams shut and there's still £20 million to spend as well. So, keep those transfer suggestions coming in in the comment section down below and I'm sure we'll make a big new signing in the next episode, probably for a club record fee as well. Have a great day, guys. Much love and I'll see you for the next episode. Well, hopefully that is tonight if we get this video to 1,000 likes. Much love, and I'll see you for it very soon.